Have you noticed that everything keeps getting more and more expensive? It's honestly getting ridiculous and people are having to choose between literally eating and the little luxuries in life. And stuff just keeps going up and up, including, unfortunately, our photo editing software. Yes, I'm talking about Adobe. It's gone up literally 50% overnight and it's just honestly out of reach for a lot of people. And that makes me really frustrated and sad. I don't know if it's just price gouging or just the cost of doing business these days, but for professionals, it might not be that big of a deal. It's just another business expense that's a write-off, but for people getting in to the hobby, to the art, well, it might be out of reach. So I wanted to show you guys an alternative, something I've talked about before here that's a really great alternative to photo editing software, something that doesn't have that annoying, recurring, never-ending monthly bill, something that you can buy and own outright forever that just keeps improving, and that is Luminar Neo. This is a really cool photo editing program. I wanted to dive in here, show you exactly what this is capable of, edit a few photos in real time and show you exactly what this thing can do and why it might be a great alternative for somebody like you. If you do end up liking this video, guys, do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button, join the community. And with all that said, let's dive in and see what this thing's all about. Okay guys, welcome to Luminar Neo here. If you haven't seen it before, this is the basic interface. We're in our catalog tab here. I've got some few photos to edit today and I wanted to maybe take a few problem photos and show you what we can do with just a few clicks and a few sliders, how easy it is. So even if you're not a professional, maybe you're just beginner, you can get going and get some great results really quickly. So I also wanted to mention that this is not just a basic photo editor. You've got stuff like, of course, generative tools using AI. You've got merge tools like HDR, focus stacking, panorama stitching, and you can even upscale photos to get a really good baseline if you maybe have a low resolution image, for example, and you wanted to bring it up to get your edits going. Well, you can do just that. So let's have a look at a few photos starting with this landscape here. This is one I took on a very bright day. This is actually one of several bracketed photos. And in this case, the sky has been completely blown out. Um, even the shadows are struggling a little bit. So how can we bring this back? Is this actually even possible to salvage? So let's have a look at the power of presets first of all. There are some that come with this, uh, for example, here. Uh, and I'm going to just take a look at those, but you can buy sets of presets um, or make your own, whatever you want to do. And all you need to do basically is just highlight them uh, to show you what it might look like when you decide to go with that kind of baseline. And some of them are really neat. Some of them even have a sky replacement mask built right in. So that's kind of neat, and because our sky is completely blown out here, I think maybe we'll go with that one. So just clicking on that, you can choose uh, how much you wanted to kind of bring in um, or uh, apply that preset to. But even right there, um, if you look, it's actually done a very good job, if you ask me, of masking in that sky, that sky replacement, where maybe just a few years ago, this would have taken hours and hours to to try and match the colors and mask out all these little trees and branches and things. So literally just highlighting a preset has masked that sky out and it looks pretty natural if you ask me. So a really good start right before we dive into our editing tab here. So over here in the editing tab, we've got our basics. We've got a landscape section. We've got a creative section. We've got a, a portrait section and we've got a professional section. So lots to choose from a, almost an overwhelming amount of tools and there's no way we could possibly get through all of them in this video. But if you did wanna see a particular aspect, maybe you're a, a landscape photographer, maybe you're a portrait photographer. If you wanna see more of a particular aspect of this software, just let me know down in the comments. So let's start with just our basics, our develop tab here. We can use auto, but we can also just start making some basic, basic adjustments. There are smart contrasts here, maybe up that a bit, uh, bringing down the highlights to kind of get that harshness off the trees and bring up the shadows a bit to expose a bit more detail uh, down in the darker sections here. So yeah, we can play around with that. Uh, we can get into color. We can make an adjustment to the, the temperature if we wanted to make it a, a little bit warmer. We can uh, kind of play with the saturation, which I find is a little bit heavy here in the greens, play around with the vibrance a bit. And that's starting to look kind of more true to life as to what I saw on this day. Just beautiful green water and vibrant lush forest here. And you know, in, in about 10 seconds there, we've just used a preset and just a few sliders. And let's have a look at the before and the after here. 
just a click we can go before obviously yep needing a lot of work and there's the after so again you don't need to be a professional you could be a beginner and just get in there and maybe you, you just botch the the settings of your camera and if you wanted to kind of bring that back just know that it's completely possible even if you don't have a ton of editing experience and you can try a few different before and after aspects to show exactly uh, what you've done and yeah pretty dramatic if you ask me there pretty cool feature and we really haven't really got into any of the AI features here. We can do cool things like sun rays here. We can place a sun center and even add basically a sun to our image where there might not have been one or it might have been impossible to capture before. So let's have a look at this and then let's have a look at how cool and how interesting this is and how good the masking is. If we move it around our image, you can see it kind of going behind the trees as if it knows uh, which layer you want to have it on. And I really like this tool. I think it's really cool and creative. It adds uh, to, to, to landscapes, just a different element. You can even bring it outside of the image here. And as I move it around, you can see those, those sun rays just coming, peeking through the trees. Uh, I think that's really cool and how it uh, takes into account all these trees here and, and just adds different layers. I think that's really cool. And then we can come around here and, and play around with the penetration, uh, lengths, the overall look of the rays. We can change the actual sun settings, the ray settings, the number of rays, the warmth of it all. So really fine tuning your stuff. And, and that's where this really kind of gets neat and creative for me. And you can go as crazy as you want to, get as creative as you want to. And we're kind of leaving the more realistic version of what this might have looked like, but it, it all depends on your creative side and where you want to end up. So there's our sun rays and we've got just so many, so many tools here. Uh, maybe we'll touch on a few more in, in a couple of the other photos. So just to show you in a landscape photo, once again, the before and the after in just a few seconds. So here's our second photo and this is of a child here just enjoying nature. We've got some interest here in the water with the ripples, but obviously there's uh, it leaves something to be desired here with all these kind of weird highlights and shadows here. We're not really sure what's going on. So uh, let's go into our tools here and let's check out the power of AI. We're not going to use any presets this time. Uh, we're going to use something called Enhance AI. So we're, we're basically going to hand over control uh, as a baseline to use the slider to see what the program thinks we should start with. And let's just uh, bring that up. Let's you know what, let's just crank it to 100. We don't have much sky here, there's nothing to enhance. But even with that one slider there, uh, look what it's done. It's brought in color, it's brought in clarity, it's brought in the detail of the shadows that weren't there before. Let's have a look at the before and the after there, just with one accent AI slider here. So a very good baseline, I think that's just incredible. Um, and now we can go and kind of check out our subject here, maybe isolate our subject a bit to bring more interest into what's actually going on here. But again, for the sake of time, let's just focus on a few neat tools that I think are, are really well done. Um, I want to look at something called portrait bokeh in the portrait section here. And this is basically going to give the illusion of shooting with a very fast lens. So we get a really nice, uh, creamy, expensive looking background. So let's, let's up that to say 50%. And right there is actually gone and isolated our subject. It knows right away that's our subject. And if you look at the background, what it's done is, is added that very fast aperture effect, giving it a very shallow depth of field look. Uh, and I think that's pretty neat. So it, it's giving the illusion of shooting with a very fast lens when you might not have a very fast or expensive lens. So we've cranked that all the way um, and it, again, it's isolated our subject, very, very shallow depth of field there. Uh, but if I wanted to bring back a bit of interest into maybe our ripples here, um, we can do that as well. We can go down to our brush control, change the strength, the softness of, of our mask here. And if I wanted to bring a bit of focus back, I can actually just paint that in here uh, so that we're not losing all the detail uh, and just have a kind of a transition into the back of our uh, our beautiful soft background there. So yeah, maybe a little bit more here. We're gonna bring back the detail in those cool ripples and just kind of play with it a little bit until it looks uh, maybe a bit more natural, something like that. 
So this is at 100, so I wanna bring that down a little bit more, maybe believably for me. And you can see that even it does a pretty good job at, at creating that those fake uh, bokeh balls in the back here from these highlights. It does a really neat job at that. And uh, just one more tool that you can, it really doesn't matter the gear you have, you're just free to be creative with your editing, um, regardless, again, of your skill level or your gear. So I'm liking this so far. I might want to bring a little bit more of the color out of this beautiful water here. Once again, I can go into our uh, develop tab and then down to uh, our color, maybe bring up a little bit of vibrance to just get that beautiful greens and the blues out of there. And there's a lot of this image here for me that's just not doing a whole lot that might be a little bit distracting in the corners. So I might want to crop that uh, just a bit to bring more of the the subject here uh, just into our view so maybe changing that up a little bit uh, like that and there we go just an easy crop you can actually if you're not very good with your composition or if you're struggling a bit you can actually use composition ai and let it decide what it kind of thinks you know should be done in this case so for me it doesn't always nail it but you know it, it can be really kind of neat and creative um, in this case, I kind of had the vision of um, just bringing our subject uh, a little bit closer and really focusing on those ripples. And there's our final result. So again, here's our before and there's our after. Not too shabby. And finally, we've got a beautiful elk here in less than ideal conditions, shot in the last few minutes of the day. So obviously we're really struggling with available light. Let's see what we can recover out of this image. First, I'm going to hit my Enhance AI slider up again to get a good baseline. Maybe something like that. And right off the bat, it's really done a great job at bringing back some of the details and the shadows. We do have a bit of distracting elements here, but that's totally fine. Uh, we do have some image quality tools I'd like to mention as well, like Noiseless AI and Super Sharp. And this is going to let you denoise your image if you're shooting with like a high ISO setting. And of course, you're going to be able to sharpen an image as well if need be. So I think we have a good baseline, but I'm gonna go in and use something called Structure AI. And if you ever wonder what these tools are actually doing, you can hit that info button and it's gonna give you a, a very simple detailed explanation. In this case, this tool is gonna to allow you to adjust the clarity and the detail of an image. So one way or another, if you wanted to really soften it up, you can go one way, or if you wanna bring back those details, you can go the other way. In this case, I wanna bring as much of the detail into this beauty that I can, and we can check the before and the after of just this tool by hitting the before and the after button. And it's pretty dramatic. We can check the entire before and after of our whole image down here. So that Structure AI, really powerful tool for clarity, uh, but I do want to maybe let go of some of the interest in the corners here. And I'm gonna use the vignette tool for something like that. In our essentials tab, we're, what we're gonna do is just bring down our vignette or interest in the corners here. And you can see that happening in real time, just bringing our focus into our subject here. But I find the contrast to be a little bit much. I'd like to edit the contrast a bit of our colors and a really great tool down in professional is called Super Contrast. And what this is gonna do is be able to fine tune, not just contrast in general, but our highlights, our midtones, and our shadows. So again, without getting too in depth here, you can see in real time, just making some adjustments so that those highlights here are not super blown out. We can change uh, that balance. We can bring a little bit more whites into them, um, bringing back some of the colors and the midtones, maybe making the transitions a little bit nicer. Um, and yeah, for me, that is just making a huge difference. And if we want to go even further, one of my favorite tools of all time, the Dodge and Burn tool, really lets us customize where we want to bring our attention and also adding incredible depth to our image. So in this case, you can lighten or darken. And what I'm going to do here is just go through and just lighten up where I want some of the interest of our image to be and where I don't want it, I'm going to darken it just a little bit. So taking, taking our interest outside of our subject here and just kind of darkening that up and really bringing our eye into this beautiful creature here. So again, lots of creative, too many tools to get into in just one video, but we can go into toning, mood, 
doing stuff like dramatic where it's gonna help you lower the saturation and contrast, giving you a gritty cinematic look to your photo. So just really cool, interesting, creative uh, kind of tools at your disposal. So just throwing that up to 100 there. Again, that makes it look like an old kind of uh, 1970s or something photo of a wildlife, but we can just kind of add that edge a little bit there. And once again, check the before and the after of it, just a bit more dramatic looking. You can mess with the local contrast, brightness and saturation. So again, just an incredible amount of tools at your disposal. So let's have one more look at the before here and the after. Incredible in just seconds without a lot of know-how, you can take full control and recover images that you might have thought were gone very quickly, very easily. So if you didn't want to pick this software up, I will drop a discount code for you in the description. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below and I'll do my best to answer them as fast as I possibly can. If you did end up liking this video, do me a favor, hit that like and subscribe button, guys. Join the community and like always, make mistakes, be yourself and get out there and take some more pictures. See you next time.